Rarely do we think about the microchips that power our machines. Even less so the microscopically tiny transistors inside those microchips that perform each and every function our computers do for us. Now, a transistor is a tiny electronic switch that controls the ones and zeros of the information age. At the headquarters of the computer giant Intel in California, they're constantly having to think small. Kaizad Mystery leads the team developing a new generation of 3D transistors. The challenge, how to pack more transistors onto each microchip. The more transistors you can cram in, the more powerful the chip can be. This 3D transistor is a new concept, a new architecture for making these little tiny transistors that's more power efficient and it's just fundamentally a better switch. Dubbed Trigate transistors, the 3D transistors are unbelievably tiny, just 22 nanometers across and densely packed in astronomical numbers. So if you take these Trigate transistors and you take a human hair, you can fit thousands of them across the width of a human hair. Pretty hard to visualize, but Mystery tells me he can fit 100 million transistors on the head of a pin. Why did it need to be 3D? What we've done with these 3D transistors is created these pillars or fins on the surface of the wafer. And now the current can flow on all three sides of that fin. So in any given footprint, you can have more current conduction. Intel's original microchip, the world's first from 1971, is now exhibited at the company museum. This looks like the beginning to me. Yes, this is uh, artwork for Intel's first microprocessor, the 4004, that we introduced in 1971. At that time, we had only about 2,000 transistors uh, on, this, on this microchip. A mere 2,000. And of course, these days, it's over a billion transistors on a modern chip that's in a, in a PC. The compulsion has always been to go forth and multiply, all governed within these walls by Moore's law. Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel in 1965, made the observation that the number of components on a chip doubled every 18 to 24 months. So the first Pentium processor in 1993 had about 3 million transistors. Okay, so does, the, does the, the chip itself stay about the same size? The chip itself stays about the same size, but we're able to increase the computing capability, the compute power of the chip by squeezing more and more transistors, you know, the ability to process more and more ones and zeros uh, into a given chip size. Intel's latest chip to use 3D transistors is called Ivy Bridge, and it has 1.4 billion transistors. The first products went into PCs and servers, and over time, we're going to bring the power efficiency of this new technology to other segments like tablets and smartphones. Intel's factories produce over 5 billion transistors every second. Do you think the public understands it? You know, I think transistors really are the unsung hero of the information age. Those are the things that make our computers and our servers and our smartphones and our tablets. They all depend on that. The entire information age depends on these little tiny transistors that get ever smaller every two years.